one of the things that strategy games rely on is things like diplomacy. And quite often they will release the game. And if you want to have diplomacy, you know, dealing with ambassadors. So basically, I was thinking that maybe, and hear me out on this, maybe we could try not doing the wrong thing and instead maybe try doing the right thing this time. Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends. And at this moment, there is a spider walking on the wall just behind my monitors. The body isn't big, you know, it's, it's one of those larger body, smaller leg spiders. And with the whole leg span, it's like about the size of a nickel. You know, it's the smaller body, but it's been walking across the entire wall back there. And it's clumsy, it keeps falling. But I don't mind because it's not in my personal area. But yeah, I've been watching it go down the wall now. It fell back behind my monitors, which you know, like two feet away from the wall. So it's back there. And hopefully my ADHD will uh, make me forget that it exists. Thumbs up. And hey, front load to give videos. If you like what you see in here, if you could toss me a like, that'd be cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, if you haven't and you like what you see in here, that too would be awesome. As well, if you could leave me a comment, that would be double plus good. And I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are literally beautiful and literally awesome. Without them, I would be hosed like a Christmas monkey. And trust me, that is no way to be hosed. So if you would like to be one of these patrons and help me survive, that would be a very nice thing. I like surviving, and I know my pets do too. That would be very cool, and I have links in the show more. Video description, thumbs up. If you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, there's links to a PayPal. And if you'd like to help me out without sending money, there's an Amazon wish list link. And of course, inside of there as well are links to my post office box, so you can send me anything at all you like, and anything I get, I will show off in video. Yay, thumbs up. Front loading of videos over. <laughs> so hopefully the spider hasn't fallen onto the desk and then will crawl in this direction. If it just stays back there, that'll be fine. I don't mind creepy crawlies like spiders being in the room because spiders eat bugs. And I have my window open, so bugs come in quite a bit. <laughs> uh, no screen, so yay. So thumbs up for that but I just thought I'd mention that because the spider crawled across there and back so yay also I might as well talk about some of this stuff because I've written it on my topics list I did have my med manager appointment yesterday terrible connection huge amounts of lag but we did talk <laughs> I'm changing my Wellbutrin I'm going to be going on to an extended release 150 milligrams right now I'm taking 75 in the morning 75 in the evening so with the 150 extended release I'm gonna have 150 milligrams for like 12 hours and so that should help a lot more than just 75 twice a day so that'll be good and I also talked about the Ritalin use and she asked me what do I want to do with the Ritalin then As much as I would like to try taking it and taking a blood pressure med with it, that's a very dangerous game and it's not a good game to play. The reason is you're not taking one med and then this med cancels out that part of the other med. That's not how medicine works. The Ritalin is still going to be stressing my system in such a way that it's sending out all those messages to my body to raise my blood pressure. And that's still going to be happening constantly, except I'm taking another med that through a different system lowers my blood pressure. So this one's still firing and stressing. This one is bringing another part of the system down to try and bring it here. That ain't good, that's not healthy. Especially if, you know, this med doesn't work as well on this day and this day works, this one works a little better when it's wow. Yeah, so I'm going to periodically use up my Ritalin until it's gone and then it's gone. <sighs> Yay. 
So, life is life in that fashion. Yesterday, I talked about solo RPG stuff and the game 4 Against Darkness and the game D100 Dungeon. And how one of the things that bugs me about the game 4 Against Darkness is you have to buy so many extra supplemental booklets to make it into a full game. And I mentioned how it's like the paradox uh, video game developers and what they do with their games. They do a lot of releasing grand strategy games. Oh, the spider's on the wall over there now. And they release grand strategy. And one of the things that strategy games rely on is things like diplomacy. And quite often they will release the game. And if you want to have diplomacy, you know, dealing with ambassadors and embassies and foreign policy, you got to pay money for that. And that's like, that should be a core part of a strategy game is diplomacy. But nope, nope, you got to pay for that. And that's really, again, what it feels like with Four Against Darkness. If you want to make it a real game, if you want to do this with it, you got to pay extra money. If you want to do this with it, you got to pay more. If you want to play this way with it, you got to buy this booklet too, until you've got a huge stack of books at eight bucks a pop at a minimum. Ugh. Now, the reason I bring that up is because yesterday I actually managed to squeeze in some D100 dungeon. I played a mission, a quest, and I screwed it up. But I thought I'd talk about it anyway. I mean, my character sheet is just a character sheet with a character. You know, it's straight out of the book, and then you modify it as you play. And it, you've got your stuff that you carry with you, and I'm not going to bother showing you that because it's in small print and you can't read it. But I've got a dungeon map that I had to create and draw. And then there's a combat track where you keep track of your combats that you fight because when you win, you keep them on the, on the sheet. And then as you fill up the sheet, there's bonuses and pluses that you get. And when you fill up the sheet, you start a new one and then the bonuses start over again. So you're gaining experience in that fashion and getting better. And you can also get better as you do things. Now, I screwed up. I was supposed to loot three parts from monsters. And here's where, again, Martin Knight, the author of the book, really needs an editor. Because to loot three parts, you have to get them by killing monsters. In no other way can you do it. That fact is mentioned once in sort of an out-of-the-way place. It should be in a big area, because that's important. It shouldn't be a minor note off to the side somewhere. But yeah, I had to fight all the monsters, get the parts. I couldn't just find parts. So, not a full adventure. Life is life. I mean, it worked out well, and it was fun, and it took a couple hours, and that was good. Now, the reason I also brought up the whole DLC thing is I've also got this and another thing coming up. It's another expansion. There's five books all together in the thing. This is a little bit of rules and a campaign. But the rules that the game adds are optional to enhance the game. It adds, hey, you know those parts you pick up from monsters? If you use this optional rule, you can actually make some potions. So if you want to make potions instead of buying potions, you can do this witchery step and maybe make some potions. And as you make them, they get easier to make for the future. So it enhances the rules already there. They're not adding new rules that expands the game because the game pretty much covers everything. Nothing stripped out of it. You don't have to buy the DLC. There's other rule books that add more things, but they are optional rules that enhance. They're not, hey, you know that thing you couldn't do before? Well, if you pay me money, now you can. So that's the difference. Thumbs up for that. And I just thought I'd mention that because it, it bugs me. I'm trying to keep this out of the corner of sight there. I'll set it down there so it can fall down and break things. Yay. <laughs> but still, life is life. Past that, I have not really been able to think uh, too much 
I did some recording of a game for the, the channel here. It's a game stuff. Forgive me, Father. And that ended up being very late in the day by the time I was done, like 5 o'clock, because it was close to 2 when I could start recording because of the whole med manager thing and the way my head works. My mood wasn't great. I couldn't record until then. So, yay. But I didn't get much done past the recording, the editing, and while it was rendering, doing D100 Dungeon. And so, at least I got that. And while I was on walkies to Walmart, I did think, not really iterating a whole bunch of stuff. Part of it was thinking about the entirety of the setting. Because I'm focusing right now on just the cryptid part on, you know, effectively our world, which isn't our world. But running over the details of the whole cosmological thing because the entire setting deals with like the beginning of the multiverse each multiverse how different multiverses work the beings that evolve in them with the multiverse where dread amagaratsu originated how she's done the impossible in so many ways how our multiverse has split several times which multiverses don't do the blank space that surrounds each multiverse and then the effects of the cosmic horrors and them on the universes themselves the infinite city and wall that it is and then building up to finally just one of the universes is the universe where the setting is where there's the inside the outside and the razor's edge it's big and so I try to keep a lot of the details inside of my head by having to run over them and so that's a lot of what last night was being done with not a whole lot of extra thinking on things there was some but it wasn't extra thinking it's more of the things are changing for urban cryptids because there's Lynn Tanner one of the dark urban cryptids how things have been changing because he's nearly 40 but the changes that have been happening are finally taking effect even in him so it's been happening for quite some time the past 100 years and there's been a lot of changes more cryptids are starting to congregate in urban areas and with human fears and urban areas the cryptids are changing Oddly, as intimated and talked about, the dark cryptids, they're becoming more empathetic, at least amongst each other. It is the light cryptids that are ending up becoming much, much more hungry. So there's something really changing, which is something that I just have to work with. But it's still being a part of the whole inside-outside razor's edge setting. So thumbs up on that. Which, of course, is why there's Trevor Savick, who is a person who lives, who, well, born on the razor's edge and then does business traveling and hangs out with the cryptids out here because he's got the, the cryptid vision. But also thinking about other things as well, because the kaiju on the razor's edge still... I want... There's one scenario I was thinking of that's really really horrific i mean imagine a layer that has 800 billion people living in it the entire layer is a city and the city is a layer 800 billion people it is a mega mega city that functions has to function almost like clockwork to keep everything going but it is the people are happy, the city is functioning, the farms, the support stuff is all there. People are living and living well. And then suddenly, in the middle of all of this, there's the kaiju that steps in from a glamour. Something happens that now no one can leave in or out using glamours, and it starts to eat. And so the president of this lair would tell people of, at first, no fears, it's dangerous now, people are dying, it's horrific, evacuate along, along the evacuation lines. We should get this thing pretty quick, we're working on it now. 
But when the kaiju has eaten 100 billion people and there are only 700 billion left in a widening circle because it's just stepping glamour to glamour, instantly group to group, people are evacuating here, that's where it starts to really munch and chow and working to all around and stepping and eating. Well, they're telling the people, don't worry, it's bad, but we still have our best people on it. Nothing has worked so far, but at 600 billion people left, they're starting to get a little bit desperate and asking the people and independent universities and anyone out there, if you have any ideas that you've been working on, please come to us. And at 500 billion left, they're starting to really... Uh, talk about how there's not much left that they can try but they're not going to give up and when the kaiju's eaten 400 billion of them half of them in a widening circle of death where you go in this direction it's going to step eat step back out and continue no one can go into the death zone and it's widening but at 400 billion they're starting to tell their citizens um we may not be able to stop this thing and at 300 billion the entirety of civilization is on their layer is collapsing people are trying desperately to escape outward from the widening circle of death and at 200 billion it's just despair and people no longer living anywhere close to the life that they used to by this time, generations have passed. People have been born, lived, and died of old age, watching the world around them collapse as the kaiju eats and eats and eats. At a hundred billion, it's just total despair and civilization is gone. At fifty billion, people are tired of running. At twenty-five billion, there's very, very few left, of course, and when it's last down to two handfuls of people and the president who all this time has been telling the people what's been going on and watching this happen and their suit, which they don't know the kaiju is helping to keep working. They get to watch as the kaiju stuffs the last two handfuls of people into its mouth and slowly bites down with all the blood and fluids splashing out onto the president. And then the last bite. Nah. And after it's eaten every single human being but one on this entire layer, that's when it turns and leaves and leaves her there alive. And her suit, which should have kept her alive to maybe 150, she's a couple hundred years old, and it's going to continue working for a very, very long time while she's alone on an entire lair where everybody was eaten. The kaiju is a bastard. It is horrific. And of course, I've opened up 24 hours where the comments on my community tab. Going to go through and thank however many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language, well, well, well. So we have Kieran Parrish, thumbs up. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting look on that game. The Horror Files, greatly appreciated. And yeah, they did a good job on the music as well. There is Jesse Koskinen, thumbs up and always good to see you, and Lovecraft, horrible person, great imagination. And then we have RL Strange, thumbs up, J-A-Y-Y, greatly appreciated, and yeah, I need to get through my executive dysfunction so I can do something for the reaction channel, oi. We have, and good to see you, Bob Dobbs, <laughs> thumbs up. Loco5, greatly appreciated. They did a very good job on that. Foggy Nights, thumbs up and thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Insignificant Nick, Hokey Smokes. Actually, they have calculated it too. The average number of calories in the average human body is actually 125,882. It, of course, just being an average of averages. 
So 125,000 calories in a human being? Yeah, you eat one of us each day for, for a month? Good golly, Miss Molly, anybody's going to get fat doing that. Then we have Ben B. Thumbs up and thank you. There is R.J. Mitchell, greatly appreciated. Then there is a name in Kyrillic, Cyrillic. I'm not quite sure, but thank you very much. It is appreciated, and that is it. 11 people, 12 people, 12 people <laughs> who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Greatly appreciated. Get me out of my head, into the world, and dealing with real people. Thumbs up and thank you. Well, today I'm going to finally, hopefully, I hope, be able to get into an online chat with some people at the Veterans Administration so I can gather information about possible homeless help because I am at desperate risk of homelessness and it's not a good feeling. So hopefully I can get that done. Hopefully you can get done the things that you need to get done. But if you can't, survival mode is important. And of course, with diseases and all that out there, just take appropriate precautions for your situation and your location. <clears throat> you simply don't need to get sick for any reason, whether it's a pandemic or anything else that can be avoided. You don't need to get sick. Oi. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.